Hello and welcome back to our Bandit Lord series. And uh, what we're going to do in the first part of this episode is literally just try to gain another alliance in Makeb. Once we have done this, I will be heading back to Sturgeon territory and attempting to uh, further destabilize the region as much as we possibly can. And obviously we will be attempting to increase the strength of the bandits in the area as well. But as you can see, Poison Hikara actually has a little... A little task for us, but bear in mind that we do not want to work with Poison Hikara, we actually want to work with Clever Tosui there. So what we are going to do is we are hopefully going to be able to achieve victory and um, <laughs> hopefully not get absolutely murdered in the process because obviously when the last time I attempted to do something like this, I had the unfortunate circumstance where I got murdered by the side that I had just betrayed. Yes, indeed. So hopefully that is not going to happen this time around and they're going to be retrieving me in, I believe, three days. If there is a tournament going on here, then I would obviously, you know, very much like to go ahead and do that. Ah, there we go. Cancelled. Why? Why was... Why was it... Okay. Why was it cancelled? I, I... I... I don't know. I, I don't see anything here. Do you see anything? I don't see anything. Okay, that's, um, that's a little bit weird. That is a little bit strange. Okay, I guess I am a bit of an imbecile. I actually have no idea. Alright, well, never mind. I guess that means I will just be, as I say, probably making my way back. Oh, wow, this guy's really going after me super hard right here. Wow, did you see that? Encurion. Encurion is not liking me one bit. He literally wanted to murder us so badly that he chased us such a far distance. Anyway, ooh, what's going on here? Some Sturgeon vassals are attempting to take Vladiv Castle. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait here and maybe, just maybe, I will be able to prey upon them when they are done with the siege. Oh! Never mind. Okay, I'm going to prey upon the Kuzate then. Or not, as the case may be. They have a lot of units. Uh, can I win this? Can I actually win this? No, not in a million years. They have so many heavy horse archers, that is not even fair. All right, going to make my way back then, I suppose. I do need to find... Oh, hello. I do need to find a hideout. Because I need to donate a bunch of uh, prisoners at the moment. And donating a bunch of prisoners, obviously, is going to increase the overall strength of the bandits in the area. And that is exactly what we want to do. I know there is a hideout relatively close by to Sibir. So it might be the case that I will literally just have to go back there and do that. It's not really, uh, not really something that I would like to do because I'd much prefer to just drop them off right now. But I suppose it's not that far away, I guess, right? It's not that far away, so should be pretty easy. I think it's over here. I mean, where was it before? Oh, what? No, surely not. Surely it wasn't all the way over here. Maybe it was destroyed by someone else, or... Maybe? I I have no clue, actually. Because the last time that I came here, I, I'm pretty sure... That there was a hideout very close to Sibir, but maybe, uh, maybe as I say, it was destroyed somehow, or what have you. Okay, so let me see here. Alright, let's go in here, give away some uh, prisoners. We're going to give away 38 of these looters, and there we are. Look at that, 300 strength for the Sea Raiders at the moment. I'm going to recruit some bandits. I'm going to spend 10 points to get... Actually, how, how, how much space do I even have? Oh, I have a lot of space. Okay, I have a lot of space. This is really, really good. Okay, so I can get some lads. What does that mean? Okay, that reduces the strength that they have in the hideout, but it means that I don't need to spend villainy points. That's actually really nice, in my opinion. So I'm actually going to do that. Sea Raider Warriors. I mean, really, how can I say no to that? Okay, that seems really good, actually. I like that a whole bunch. Okay, so that's that's really nice. And now what we're going to do... Can I fight these Sea Raiders? I mean, I can? Mm. Mm. Okay. 
I'm gonna just try this out real quick. Because I'm a bit skeptical. I'm a bit skeptical about how it works. Ah, sea raiders are getting weaker. Okay, good to know. Right. Good to know. So we do not want to do that. Oh, wow. They lost a huge amount of uh, a huge amount of strength there. I mean, that is obviously to be, to be expected. But if I give five, then they gain 20 back. Okay, yeah. So that was, um, that was definitely not intended. I obviously did not want that to happen. But generally, uh, you know, you've got to try things out. Otherwise... How are you going to work it out? You know, how are you going to learn the intricacies of the mod and, and the various gameplay facets that you're going to need to leverage as time goes on? So generally what you're wanting to do is attack looters and attack other kinds of bandits, but I will be just generally attacking... Um, I will just generally be attacking looters, and that is what we will attempt to... Uh, capitalize on because if we can get a huge amount of looters then we can continue to oh hello there sir we will continue to increase their their strength that is exactly what we're going to do by the way we are going to increase the sea raiders strength as much as we possibly can and then we will see what happens this guy i mm, i'm i'm not entirely sure how is he going to go? I don't know. How is he going to go? Let's have a look. Let's have a look at what kind of units he has in his army. And maybe he's going to be a kind of dangerous enemy. I'm not entirely sure, but let's have a look here. Wow, he's got some He's got some pretty significant cavalry. He's got about 15 cavalry units. He has, oh, he has five Imperial Elite Cataphracts. That is not good by any stretch of the imagination. That is really, really bad. Can I can I hit them from here? Nope. Oh. <laughs> oh, now that is one of those times when I think to myself, that is the most hilarious. Oh, look at that guy. He's just going tumbling. That is hilarious. I love it. Those kinds of things. I oh, I can't get enough. Can't get enough of those. That is just too funny. Thankfully, we have completely. <laughs> <laughs> We've completely eliminated the Imperial Elite Cataphracts, I believe. I don't think there are any more of them. And if there are, then at the very least, we have reduced their population by a pretty significant amount. Oh, these throwing weapons are so fun to use. They really are. Look at that guy. Look at him. He's just going flying. Oh, that's perfect. All right, we're going to tell our forces to charge in right now. I don't believe I have too many, too many archers, so me, you know... Um, charging them in doesn't really do much. Do I have Do I have any archers, actually? Um, let me take a quick... No, no, no. We, we literally have three. That really doesn't make any difference. me one-handed on a mount yeah you might as well give me a toaster with the amount of damage that I'll do with this really you know I mean I you know technically I could basically say you might as well give me the kitchen sink and I'll just throw that at them if I can lift it because you know that's about as useful as my skills on horseback are with a one-handed weapon you know that's the that's the one thing that I gotta say I feel the developers have done a fantastic job with because obviously the combat system was overhauled and changed quite significantly to add um, more weight to the weapons that are present in Bannerlord. However, the one thing that I feel has been made worse is the one-handed on horseback. That's literally the only thing. Every single other thing in the game has been made better but I, I personally have a big, big problem fighting on horseback with one-handed. I don't know what it is. I, I really don't. Because theoretically, it should be fine, right? Theoretically, it should be all good where, you know, if you have a long enough one-handed weapon or something, easy, you know, should be super easy to deal with. But no, no, I seem to have big, big issues with it for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, we're going to be attacking these looters real fast. I'm basically just going to go in here 
And we're going to say, no, justice demands you pay for your crimes. And I'm going to hope for them to surrender. But if they don't surrender, then I'm just going to go in for an auto resolve and I'll just try to pick up as many as I possibly can. And then we'll go into the hideout. There's, there's two hideouts really close by here. That's pretty funny. Okay, so let's do this. Give away some prisoners. And look at this, 64 of them. I obviously will not be giving the Lord because that doesn't work. But I will be giving everything else. And look at that. They have now gained so much strength and they are now at 206. I actually wonder what's going to happen when we have achieved a, an overall strength for the Sea Raiders of I don't even know how much. Probably, um, I don't know, <laughs> uh, a thousand or something like that. I, I don't know what kind of goal to really set at this point. But that that is going to be quite fun. Ooh, we're going to attack these guys. Hello there, sir. All right. Um, I'm actually thinking that we'll just go straight in. I think we might just go... Oh, I haven't... What? Okay, I did not realize this. But apparently I have not leveled my character up in three whole levels. Okay, I apologize. I, I don't know if you noticed. I don't know. I certainly didn't. I mean, that's for sure. <laughs> so let's have a look here. Mm, we're going to go for, yeah, we're going to go for 50% more damage with one-handed weapons, I think. That is what we're going to do. Against shields, that is. And then we have riding skill here. Uh, you cause 20% more battle morale penalty with ranged kills while mounted. Personally, I very much like that because I am much better at using thrown weapons on horseback than I am at using one-handed. I never thought I would see the day when I would say that. And we finally got Rogue Extraordinaire. This is literally one of the best perks in the game, in my opinion. Especially if you want to make a lot of money. If you want to make a lot of money from fighting enemies and you take all of the perks in the trade skill tree and uh, maybe the charm tree and maybe the roguery tree as well, where it reduces your trade penalties you are literally going to be making, I don't even know how much. You're probably going to make 100k every single battle or something like that. You can really make a lot of money if you are smart about your perk choices once you have that roguery skill. Because that roguery skill, I mean, look at it. Increase your loot amount by 1% for every skill point over 200. So we already have 282 in roguery. So that gives me 82% more loot which is amazing. It really is. Anyway, we're going to go for... I don't actually know about this in the tactics tree. Parties that you've called to your army move 10% faster. Mm, no, I think on the march is probably better. We have a 2.5% movement speed bonus. That's what I'll do. And these things, in my opinion, are absolutely useless. I don't really like them at all. The, the tracking things. Generally, in Warband... The tracking skill would, would be something that I would never, ever take unless it was on a tracking companion. Because obviously in Warband you would try to, you know, spec your companions in such a way so that it would be the most benefit to your party as a whole. Because you would have party skills and you would have individual skills. And in that case, tracking, yeah, sure, you might as well go for it when it's a character that actually specializes in that. But for the most part, tracking is, in my opinion, kind of pointless. Anyway, that's my own perspective. You don't have to agree, obviously. Anyway, I am going to increase my tactics skill, I think, and we're going to increase riding too. So let's just go for more tactics. I know I might be going a little bit too hard in the tactics tree right here, but I kind of want to improve our, um, our auto resolve um, proficiency, I guess you could call it. Anyway, I'm going to increase my vigor skill as well as my endurance, I guess. And then we'll also go for some more social. I'm actually kind of surprised that I haven't increased my intelligence at all. Because steward skill does increase your party size. You may think it's leadership, but it actually isn't. As you can see right there, leadership literally just increases your, your morale and your garrison size and all that stuff. And steward is the thing that actually increases your party size if you are indeed the quartermaster or if you you know if you don't have anyone assigned to that role. But um, yeah, anyway, let's go in here. 
<laughs> I, I, I apologize for it taking so long, but there were so many different things to choose. Yeah, it's pretty, um, pretty crazy. All right, so let me have a look-see here. Okay, I have 20 thrown weapons. Move. I'm going to set myself a challenge for this particular fight, mainly because I am pretty sure we're going to achieve victory anyway. But the challenge is going to be... I will attempt to get 15 out of 20 kills with these thrown weapons. I mean, obviously, that's a pretty... I, I feel like that's a pretty, um, shall we say, conservative estimate. Because on the, one, on the one hand, I think to myself, oh yeah, I'm probably going to be, you know, easily able to get, you know, 15 out of 20 kills. But on the other hand, maybe if I do better, then it's going to be kind of fun, you know? So I'm going to try it out. Let's see. Okay, that was the first miss. There's a hit. There's a hit. Oh, yeah. Oh, I missed. Oh. I'm, I'm obviously not going to be trying super hard to hit. I'm just basically going to be throwing them. And if I hit, then great. And if I miss, then that's just how it has to be. But I'm going to take a look after this. Oh, so much damage. It's so fun. It is so so much fun to see the insane damage and the amazing ragdolls that occur as a result of it. Oh, so much damage. Wow. Okay. Oh, that guy actually blocked. I'm surprised. Usually they're not able to block because of the impale skill that we have. I think I actually missed a whole bunch. I got 12 kills. Oh, okay. So, pff, really? Really? 12? 12 kills? Ah, well. I suppose, I mean, on the one hand, yeah, I could definitely assume that that was going to happen because, I mean, obviously I wasn't really trying super hard to get hits. I was just randomly throwing stuff most of the time. But here's the thing. I noticed, I wonder whether this has any impact on it, but I noticed that the impale skill did not fully penetrate one or one or two of the shields that we hit and that was kind of interesting to me so that means that if maybe if you hit from a certain angle or you hit from a certain distance with a thrown weapon it is not going to penetrate the shield because i could hear through the sound obviously of the thrown weapon hitting the shield that it did not fully penetrate because otherwise it would have killed the the enemy behind it right so that's kind of interesting to me. Anyway, we're going to take this guy prisoner, and we're going to be rescuing some sea raiders, and we're going to be taking some prisoners in the process as well, and then we're going to be moving on. Oh, look at this. We have some more gear to equip ourselves as well, and we can also equip our companions too. Oh, she got a nice new shield. That is nice. There we go. And Well, among many other things, of course. And we're going to be going back to the hideout once again. I'm actually wondering whether I should just randomly attack absolutely every single thing in the area that might actually be much more efficient than just attacking vassals or something like that because if we literally attack villages and caravans and all manners of things eventually we're going to have a huge amount of prisoners and then i will literally be able to just you know put them in there however i like and then it's going to be super, super easy. Anyway, I'm going to go into Omor real fast because I think someone has taken back the alley that I had. Oh, she, what? Is the other gang leader dead? Because there were two gang leaders in Omor. Oh, that's interesting. That is, yeah, that is actually really interesting. Okay, so she needs recruits. Who do you need? I'll find your recruits. How many do you need? I didn't, I didn't even see. I didn't even see. You know, she needs 11. Okay. Do I not have 11? Got the task. I brought you a few men. Ah, oh, yes, I have, I have exactly 11, but unfortunately they do not count. <laughs> None of these guys actually count. That is kind of amusing. All right, so not available in... Rebel towns. Hmm. Really? Oh, okay. Well, uh, I, I gotta say, I'm kind of... Uh, I, I, I don't know what to do as a result of that, to be honest. I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, 
uh where where are my companions where where are they because it feels to me like they are not i mean obviously they're not there right they're obviously not there so this is going to be uh kind of interesting uh anyway I'm, i guess i'm just going to attack this hideout I'm, I'm not this hideout this caravan right here okay so yeah hand over your goods yes yeah, so be it there we go all right so we're just going to auto resolve against this nice amount of units and we're going to be taking the horses as well, of course. And we're building grudges all over the place. Sea Raiders are getting stronger. Mm-hmm. Very good. That's exactly what we want. And I am going to be... Uh, I, I will be getting the bandits. Don't worry about that. I will be getting the bandits for the task, but I have 30 days for that. 377 Combat strength right now. Super nice. Okay, so I'm wondering, did my companions get transferred over to Sibir? That might very well be the case. So I'm going to go over and actually check whether that has happened. Because if that has happened, then that's great. Because that means that, you know, <laughs> then I don't need to worry so much about them. But if that isn't the case, then I have no idea where they've gone. And that's going to be a bit difficult. Anyway, we have now... Oh, what? Wait a minute. Do I just do I just give these? You can only transfer 11. What, well, that's all she... That's all she needed? Oh, that was super easy. Okay, I, I thought she needed actual prisoners. And I thought she was going to convert them to her side or something like that. Okay, I am... Uh, sometimes... Very dense, and there you go. Okay, so I am uh, probably just going to ransom all of these guys, to be honest. 20k, I think that's pretty good. And we can recruit some minor faction troops as well. For gold, no less. For gold, this is pretty good. Let's recruit some minor faction troops. Uh, I don't know how good these guys actually are. I think the foresters could be quite good, but I don't really like the lake. Oh, actually, the lake rats are actually not even bad. They're pretty good. They're pretty good all around. These Scalders, they are okay as well. Oh, okay. Interesting, interesting. I've always found them to be extremely useless when I have when I fought them before. So, I don't know whether that's just me. But, um, yeah, we're going to take the Lake Rats, I suppose. There we go. You took too many recruits. The deal is limited to... Are you serious? Okay, I'll just take the, recru the, uh, the Foresters then. Okay. I thought because they gave me the opportunity to select more that I would have been able to, you know, indeed recruit more, but apparently not. All right. Well, that's perfectly fine. Let's go over to Sibir now then and actually see what's going on, because if my companions are there, then that's great. And if they're not, then, well, I have no idea what is actually going to happen there. I did not know that that was a limitation of the Forbury mod. So that's kind of interesting. I, I wonder what prevents the Forbury mod from working in a rebel town. Yeah, there we go. It did get transferred. So control of our business has been transferred over to Sibir because obviously we own this as well. So let's just say that Sibir becomes a rebel a rebel town. That's going to be a bit difficult, isn't it? Anyway, we have some available upgrades right here. So I have four available upgrades. What do we want to do? Do we want to increase more smugglers? I think we should probably get more smugglers. You can see here plus three smugglers per partnership. Smugglers increase your profit greatly. Receive free goods in your warehouse every few days. Um, th this basically just shows all of the mm, all of the benefits that you get. Anyway, one worker per five in comfort level. Cost of reveal your good fortune is halved. Plus one to hangout recruitment per ten workers. Comfort will increase the hangout max capacity. And then we also have this. Uh huh. Healing cost is halved. Wow, this is actually really extensive, to be honest. This is really, really extensive. Okay, I can't do the weekly... I mean, I can do the weekly upgrade. I mean, technically, we have a lot of money right now. So, technically, we could do this. And, yeah, I think that's... I think that's fine. The corruption impact, security level of the town. I do need to reduce that quite a bit, I think. Okay, increases your profit. So, I'm going to increase my logistics... And we're going to go... Oh, only available in your main base. Okay, so technically I can make this my main base right now if I want to, I suppose. But I don't really want to mess that up. Because what can happen is if 
Omor is indeed my main base and I change it to Sibir, then I'm not going to be able to access these companions and they're going to be stuck in here. So that's obviously a bit of a problem. Uh, villainy points. Three villainy points. Okay, so I need to take something back. I will go and I will take the waterfront back by the looks of things. So let's do that real fast. And, uh, I, you know, I kind of wish I could take these guys prisoner. Because then I would be able to, um, you know, decide what I want to do with them. So, for example, if I wanted to, um, shall we say, <laughs> execute him, then I could obviously do that and so on. So that might be kind of nice. Anyway, let's just murder this guy. Oh, sir's coming in there. Go on. Get, get him. Get him. Oh, apparently she's not having a good time. So I'm going to help her out a little bit. There we go. And are we good? Yep, we are perfectly fine. All right, that's great. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What's this? As you move through the streets, you hear whispers of an upcoming war between your faction and the Sturgeons. Upon hearing this, you slink away without attracting any suspicion. Okay, hilariously enough, I believe we are already at war against them. So there's not really any, <laughs> any need to be surprised about that, but there you go. Okay, so wait a minute. Did I not take that back? Ah. Uh... What? I thought I... Is it because she got the kills? It might be because she got the kills. I think that might be the reason. Okay, yeah. So we might need to do the... Um, the killing ourselves. So I'm going to go with a one-handed then. I guess. Wait a minute. Where are the... Where are the enemies? I assume that they are now wounded, right? Because I don't... Oh, hello there. Oh, no, that was a townsman. That's not actually... Uh... <laughs> Word is that oil sells well in Van Overpol. A profit of nine. A load, they say. Ah, my apologies, sir. May I help you with something? Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> conversation. Like, he literally just goes... You know, he's like, Oh, yeah, I, I will tell you a very important business tip. Upon meeting you for the first time. What a wonderful guy. He's very, very helpful indeed. Okay, so unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to take that back right now. But Yana is right here. And I might like to actually attack. So also what I'm going to do is I'm going to start leveling my bear thieves into bear bandit archers. It's about time that we gained a couple more archers in my army composition, in my opinion. So that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, so we're going to attack Yana here. And let's do it. Yes, I'm hoping that I'll be able to capture a, um, a pretty significant amount of their units. And then I'll be able to go to the hideouts and strengthen the sea raiders even further. Which is exactly what we want to do. Do you think I'm going to be able to kill the enemy, enemy, enemy lord like this? Ooh, took out a horse. Took out a horse. If only I'd aimed just that little bit higher. Well, there you go. <laughs> that was easy enough, wasn't it? Yes, indeed. The thrown weapon, fantastic. Such a such a fun weapon. It really is. If you if, okay, so here's the thing. I'm gonna recommend something real fast. And I mean, obviously, if you haven't seen how fun this is already, then um, maybe me specifically saying something will make a difference. But I I don't know. It doesn't really matter. The point is, what I'm trying to say. If you want to have fun in Banner Lord. And you just want to look at some hilarious ragdolls. And I mean, you can create all kinds of really funny situations where this can be a thing. Like, you know, you hit someone when they're climbing up a ladder or, you know, something like that in a, um, in a siege, you know, in a siege or something like that. Then they're just going to go flying. They are literally just going to go flying like no one's business like they are equipped with the latest model of jet jetpack and you are just going to absolutely laugh like no one's business and that's that's generally how how it is to play with thrown weapons so what i would definitely recommend is if you want to just do something like um i don't know download chaos's tweaks if you don't already have it and start a new game and just boost your experience gain 
to a super high level if you if you just want to get to the point that I'm talking about here and just try to get your thrown weapon skill to I don't know 300 or 275 or something like that and then once you have that try and buy the best possible highest damaging thrown weapons possible that you can that you can possibly find and then have a whale of a time just equip all all four slots with those guys and just go into a battle with some strong ish units and boom you will see exactly how fun it is it really is so so incredibly enjoyable anyway let's see if i can attack these guys we're just going to attack them as well a lot of these guys are not really liking me that much at the moment but there's not much i can do about that sir Yes, there's not much I can do about that. Uh, I would like to go and see if there's a hideout over here in these woods, because if there is, this is going to make things much, much easier for me, because then I'll be super close to Sibir at the same time. But it seems to me like there isn't, which is remarkably disappointing. I was thinking to myself, oh yes, there will definitely be one over there, but no, no. <sighs> what, a, what a classic predicament. Okay, so let's see. I'm mm, going to go into the trade screen real fast. Sell this. Sell this. And we are over-encumbered for some reason. Is it all of these uh, all of these saddles, potentially? Doesn't look like it. We don't have that many saddles, to be honest. Is it the, the cows and the sheep? No, it doesn't seem like that either. Leather, linen. I suppose we could sell a bunch of that. Velvet. Jewelry. I mean, all of this stuff is not that heavy. It must be my weapons. Yeah, quite a significant amount of weapons. So I think what I'm going to do is I will probably go into the smithy at some point soon. And then we'll see what we can do about that. I'm going to need to get some more villainy points. And we're just going to scam a couple of people. Force tribute, I think, should be pretty good. Um, yeah, I am fine. I can definitely handle this myself, this one. And let's go straight on in there. I'm going to try and murder these guys with th with with headshots only. And let's see if I can make it work. Well, 3 out of 4 is not too bad. Right? Three out of four. I was I was trying there as well. Could you tell? Because I just shut my face. Ah, oh, yes, indeed, indeed. And whenever I go, you know, that's the thing. That's the thing you've got to you've got to realize. Whenever I go quiet, boom, that's me concentrating. <laughs> that is me concentrating. Okay, I'm actually gonna go and do the grand heist. I think that's super fun. And what we're gonna do is I'm not going to go for any security whatsoever. All right. Oh, wow. Look at that. The security is only 3,333. That's that's not even bad, but I'm actually going to say no to this because I am wanting to see if I can do this myself. Let's see if I can achieve victory all by my lonesome. I don't think I'll have any. Oh, I do have some I do have some people helping me. Oh, that was not a that was not a good miss. Oh, <laughs> okay. We actually did it. I can't believe it, to be honest. Whew. Okay, yeah, that was um, that was interesting. That was very, very interesting indeed. But you know, that's the thing. I'm actually wondering whether that even helps. And I'm talking about the technique that I'm using or strategy that I'm using when I'm running away. Because I'm thinking that it does. Because I assume the character model has some kind of momentum to it when you jump. So I don't know whether you understand what I mean when I'm saying that, because I might be explaining it incorrectly, but I'm, you know what? I'm actually going to, 
I'm just going to go into the town center because I want to explain this to you just in case you are having you, you yourself are having difficulties with thrown weapons or something like that. But let me actually just see. Yeah, there, there is momentum. Yes, indeed. OK, so of course there is momentum. I mean, in a realistic game like this, there's definitely going to be momentum when you are moving. This is not a <laughs> this is not a platformer or anything like that. Right. So here's the thing. When you're running away, right? When you're running away from from enemies in, uh, well, when you're outnumbered, obviously, you're going to need to turn around and do this. You're going to need to turn around. If you have a, a thrown weapon or something like that, I would highly recommend doing it with thrown weapons rather than anything else. If you're going to do it with a bow, it can work. But with a crossbow, yeah, good luck. I mean, that, you know, the, the reload time is just way too large, in my opinion, unless you have decent amounts of space. But now here's the thing, when you're, when you're being chased, you can use the momentum. So basically, as soon as you jump, your momentum is fixed in that particular, I mean, in that particular direction, right? So what you want to do is you want to literally jump, turn 180 degrees, and then shoot your thrown weapon or your bow, whichever way. Obviously, if you already know this, then I apologize. And obviously, you know, that's, that's all very well and good. But if, for those of you that may not know, it's actually a really, really handy tip because you can jump like so. And I don't know whether you notice that, but literally you jump and then you continue traveling that way while you are moving back. So you continue to maintain distance from your opponent while you are still dealing damage to them. And in some games, this is called kiting. If you don't know kiting, then obviously... Um, you haven't played any MMORPGs or anything like that. But generally, yes, that is that is what it's called. Um, but yeah, that is a very, very useful skill if you are using thrown weapons or a bow and you want to maintain your distance to your opponent and you literally do not want to get into melee whatsoever. Yeah, that's a really, really good way to do it. Anyway, I'm actually going to ransom my prisoners here. I'm, I'm going to ransom Yana straight away because she might very well escape. And I don't really want that to happen. And we are going to try to run away. Oh, hello there. Wait a minute. You just you just eliminated some sea raiders. How dare you? Oh. Well, this is this is maybe not this is maybe not the best idea, is it? This is maybe not the best idea. Oh my. Okay, we might be in some uh, little bit of trouble. Oh, I'm I, I what? I leveled up again. I apparently leveled up again. I didn't know. Okay, prisoners in your party are 50% less likely to escape. Yes, I will indeed take that. Increase your mount's armor or increase your stagger damage threshold while mounted. What does that mean? Stagger damage threshold. Oh, that means when you're up against someone with a pole arm, your, your horse does not get startled as much, I assume. I'm going to go for that. I think that sounds really, really good, actually. Okay, so yeah, we're going to increase our tactic skill again. Should I really do that? Uh, I'll increase this and I'll increase one handed. I'll increase tactics and then we'll go for another point in social and another point in endurance, I guess. And then we'll just go on from there. All right, let's do this. We are outnumbered very significantly. And we are also outgunned in terms of their combat strength. But that is not something a few well-placed thrown weapons may not uh, be able to handle. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Uh, how many How many cavalry do I have? Let's have a look. Ooh, I've got a pretty significant amount of horse archers. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Okay, no, 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 no. You are, you are missing way too much. Come on now. Come on, Bruce. You can do this. There we go. That was easy. All right. <laughs> we just completely murdered those guys. They didn't even bother. They didn't even bother defending against us. What? What are they doing? It's literally like they're just giving up. They just thought to themselves, ah, oh, this guy, this guy again with his thrown weapons. He likes our ragdolls way too much. Yeah, indeed, indeed. I mean, how can you not think that that's hilarious? I mean, generally, you know, how can someone not think that that's extremely funny to literally have a... Uh, I mean, 
To be fair, I think that that kind of ragdoll effect can definitely be a thing when you're hit by a ballista, for example. And I'm not talking about more of a realistic situation here. But a person throwing it, it, it makes me feel like my character is some kind of demigod because he's, he's literally throwing the javelin in such a way that it feels like there's a force of a thousand suns behind it or something, you know? It's, it's one of those. It's one of those feelings, which is really, really amusing to me. And, and uh, funnily enough, oh, I actually hit one of my own guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, he doesn't mind anymore. He's dead. He's fine. He, he's okay. But um, yeah, generally, um, what was I about to say? Oh, yeah, I got distracted because I killed one of my own guys. Oh, I don't know what I was. What, I don't know what I was about to say now. Oh well, never mind. Never mind. I'm sure it was something completely unimportant. Ooh, that was a nice hit. Very good, Bruce. You actually were able to kill someone with a one-handed weapon. Oh, look at that. I, I got three kills with my one-handed weapon while mounted. Who would have expected that? Certainly not me. Okay, let's just wait here for some time then while they eliminate the last few enemies. And then we can move on. There we go. Okay, so we did actually achieve victory. I'm kind of surprised, but we did end up losing a huge amount of units in the process. As you might expect. And we will be taking all of them prisoner. Oh, yes. Absolutely all of them. Thank you. Okay, wait a minute. Going to swap out those prisoners, then take the highest tier prisoners. And then what we'll do is we will swap these other guys. There we go. For the lords. And then we'll be moving on. There we are. All right. So my capacity is exceeded once again. You know what? I think I just need to get horses, to be honest. I think that was the main thing that I talked about in the previous episode. And I did not do that for some unknown reason. Can I please move faster than these absolute imbeciles? I very badly need to move faster than them. At the very least, I will level up my troops. Gain some quick combat strength before we inevitably get engaged upon potentially. Are we still in disorganized state? No, we're not. So that means that we are moving as uh, as fast as we possibly can. It looks like we're actually escaping. Whew, that was close. That was very, very close indeed. Okay, very nice indeed that we were able to escape. Finally, and now I can basically just put all these guys in here. And boom, 931 combat strength for the Sea Raiders. Oh, that is amazing. All right, so now that we have done that, I am probably just going to go around to a couple of uh, villages here just to recruit some more of my custom my custom people. And, oh, wow, look at that. We're actually getting a, a whole bunch of horse archers right now, which is kind of interesting. There's a load of vassals in and around the area as well. Kind of, um, I mean, not surprising, I suppose, to, to see those, but... Um, there's a lot of activity in this area at the moment. It seems like um, the Sturgeons are trying very hard. I think they're... F oh, yeah, they're fighting against the Northern Empire right now. I think that's probably the main reason. Yeah, indeed. Indeed, that is that is the main reason. And you can see here that they are generally recruiting from a huge amount of different villages as well, which is making things very difficult for me. Anyway... Justice demands you pay for your crimes. Apparently, they uh, they did not uh, they did not surrender. Never give up, never surrender. Apparently, is their motto. And who's that? Oh yeah, that's that's the rebel faction. Yes, it's super strange that we have this going on here. But oh look at this! I can literally go in here anytime I want, and I can recruit these guys, which is kind of nice. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna ransom our prisoners. I'm gonna basically just ransom all the lords. I'm just trying to make as much money as possible, to be honest. Generally, that is what I am going to try to do from now on. We really do need to... Oh, look at this. I can actually... Um, <laughs> I can actually access this again, amusingly enough. I'm not entirely sure why I was able to not, not do it before. But yeah, anyway. So anytime we need units, we can basically come over here, which is super nice. Anyway, I actually think that's going to be it for this episode. I was about to get carried away. Uh, I could play this literally for hours upon hours upon hours because it is just so expansive it really is anyway that's gonna be it i thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time